Hello and welcome. Let's talk tabletop. Today's topic comes from Jasmine Schaefer and amongst many, many different topics that she suggested was table manners. Now, I know all you kids and your newfangled fifth editions and discords and roll twenties may never have experienced this, but back in the day, if you wanted to play D&D, you had to gather a bunch of people around a table. You know, usually in some basement or some <laughs> somebody's dining room or, or whatever hobby shop you could get to lend you table space if you buy enough soft drinks from them or whatever. And every group kind of had its own etiquette after a while. And even, even myself, having been in the, uh, the Western Kentucky University's uh, Gamers Guild, there were certain expectations that came with being around a table in close proximity with half a dozen other people. Because it could be a GM and four players, or a GM and six players, etc., etc. I think the biggest game I ever participated in in Gamers Guild was like a GM and seven players, and that was just a big, unwieldy group of people. But today we're going to go over... Uh, what I wish everybody would do when it comes to table manners, table etiquette. So this is kind of outside the game, but kind of goes along with your enjoyment or your, uh, the, uh, I guess etiquette really is the best word. The etiquette that goes with playing a team sport like D&D. &D. And it's going to sound like common sense, but you'd be surprised how uncommon it is amongst some people. So... You sit around the table, right? What's the first thing you might notice that's uh, not going well is freaking hygiene. Guys, if I'm sitting within two feet of you and you smell like ass and armpits, you're doing it wrong. You know, whatever time of day the game is, I don't care if it's right after you get home from work, I don't care. You know, take a shower, use some deodorant, scrub your face, you know, just freaking comb your hair, whatever it's going to be. You're getting together in a social setting for, you know, five, six, eight, even 12 hours. Some of these games run really long. I don't want to smell you the whole time. Uh, the It's fine if you want to play an orc barbarian, but I don't want you to smell like an orc barbarian. So, you know, and, and that sounds like a given, I know, but I've got a whole list of different things. So hygiene is certainly one of the big ones. It shouldn't take away from other people's gaming experience because they can smell you across the table. And trust me, at the business at my day job, at the business that I work at, I had one coworker that I had to stand to one side of him because if he faced me and talked, I could smell his breath at arm's length. And I was like, dude, do you not fucking brush your teeth in the morning? And he'd be like, oh, I just got up and came in. I was like, I know, I can tell. I can smell your fucking breath over here. Go away. <laughs> uh, but uh, think about how close you're going to be to people and uh, think about your hygiene. What do you smell like? What's your breath like? Don't be afraid to chew some gum. Um, what else? Uh, getting more towards the game... Do your shopping beforehand. You know, if you've got 13,000 gold and eight different things that you want to buy for your character, you know, at the end of the last game you played, you know, you probably took your character sheet and your pen and paper or whatever and you put it in a drawer because the next game wasn't going to be for two or three weeks. Don't show up at the next game and go, okay, we're all here? Yeah, I still need to buy a bunch of stuff. Is it okay if I... No, it's not okay. Yeah, two or three weeks, and you know, some groups are even luckier than that. They, they play every week. You cannot tell me that you don't have 20 minutes, you know, after the last game and before this one to sit down, grab a book, and go, okay, I need this potion, this potion, this potion, and I need some new rations, and I should get a horse and cart because we're going to do some traveling. Do your shopping beforehand. It is so hard. Uh, especially in today's busy, busy, busy world, to get five or six people and get all their schedules lined up to play a long, complicated game 
like D&D &D or Pathfinder or whatever it happens to be to get this big chunk of time between half a dozen people to where they can sit and play with you. Don't waste their time by showing up unprepared. Do your shopping, do your level ups, do all your everything. When you walk in the door, you'd best like have your have your notebook, have your pencil, you know, don't rely on your GM for that stuff. Have your character sheet and your notebook and your pencil in your hand. Set it in front of the chair where you're gonna sit. Sit down. Okay, you're ready to play. And you can maximize the time with the group and look down your nose at anybody who's doing their shopping beforehand, you know. It's, it was, when I was in Gamers Guild, it was serious taboo to, like, show up, and it was like, oh, I haven't leveled up my character yet. That was a great way to get on people's shit lists. Because, like, oh, I gotta pick a feat, and I gotta roll for new health, and the game's going on without you. Man, show up prepared. It is so hard to get people together into one into one room, into one Discord channel, whatever it happens to be, for any extended length of time. Show up with your shopping done, your character leveled up, whatever it happens to be. If you have to redo your whole character sheet because there's too many erase marks on it and there's a coffee stain and all this other crap, if you've got to redo it, redo it in your own time. And show up with a crisp new character sheet with your with your notes ready and your pen and your your pencil in your hand whatever it happens to be show up prepared time is finite and time to your gm is precious because trust me some groups of players are like herding cats it takes 20 minutes to settle them all down and say okay this is what happened last time now we're going to go forward you have to participate in, in kind of like corralling things in. It's like, okay, I'm ready. I've got my character sheet, got my notes, got my gold and my current HP, and you just set it in front of you. Okay, I'm ready. Your GM will be so happy. Trust me. Uh, what else? Uh, participate in like a final check. One of, the, one of the things we used to do in World of Warcraft, actually, before we would start raiding, like, like when we were going into Karazhan, during the Burning Crusade, back when WoW didn't suck. Um, the first thing we did before we would go challenge the Horseman, the first boss of Karazhan, we would go, okay, everybody got all your flasks ready? Okay, has everybody eaten? Okay, has everybody gone potty? You know, we're not going to stop after one or two attempts, because uh, this was really early on, we were still dying to the Horseman. Um, we're not going to stop after one or two attempts so that so-and-so can go potty. Is everybody, you know, so-and-so, are you ready? Yes. So-and-so, are you ready? Yes. So-and-so, are you ready? I have to pee. Go pee. So-and-so, are you ready? And our, our raid leader actually had a physical checklist in front of him. So again, part of coming prepared, have your dice, have your... No, bring your own shit, by the way. It is not your DM's responsibility to give you a pencil and some blank paper and to, to coddle you. He's got to worry about the campaign and the monsters and the tricks and the traps and the treasures and, and the characters and the dialogue, any pictures he's going to show you, any props that he's got, or she, you know, whatever, uh, the, the collective he as DM. But... He or she does not have time to worry about your character with your shopping, with all your stuff. You need to be proactive. And then again, this chain straight back to sit down, you know, come in the door, sit down, put your stuff down, say, okay, I'm ready. And your DM will be so happy. And, and again, that chain straight into hygiene and into, have you gone poop in the past six hours? Are you going to, we're going to start an encounter you know, okay, I roll, I hit, I gotta go poop, and then you're gone for five or ten minutes and the game just screeches to a halt. Or they, or worse yet, they skip over you and you miss out on part of the game. So, participate in a final check, you know. Does everybody have all your dice? Yes, 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 yes. Does everybody have pencil and paper? Yes, 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 yes. Has everybody gone potty? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let's play. And then, you know, you're maximizing your time. So we call that the, the raid check, or the ready check, or the final check. It's got different names at different tables. And then, of course, there's the aspect of food. 
Uh, this varies from table to table. Personally, I hate food in any and all forms at my table because uh, normally we, at my table when I'm GMing, we split the session in half. Like, if we're going to play for six hours, we'll play for three hours, we'll take a half hour for food, and then we'll play for three more hours. That gives plenty of time to run to Taco Bell, or whatever it happens to be. Since I'm a hobby gamer, and I have hundreds of dollars worth of D&D &D books, Pathfinder books, of all different, you know, different shapes and sizes and, and price tags, you know, this these two shelves here along with the fable books I've got, that's probably a thousand dollars, maybe more. You know, I don't want fucking chocolate on it, or coffee on it, or or freaking cheesy popcorn, or Cheetos. God damn, I had to pull somebody aside for fucking Cheetos, because he wouldn't stop free He had this weird, like, drumming motion with his fingers, and it was like some creeper out of a movie, and it kept getting on my maps, and I was like, dude, if you bring Cheetos again, I'm kicking you out. And I am dead serious. Look at my face. If you bring Cheetos to my fucking game again and get it all over, just don't bring it. I'm not going to let you in the door to my house. And I've had other GMs that don't care. Or it's like, well, if, it's, if all you're touching is your mini and your character sheet, I guess I don't care. And stuff like that. Or, um, I had another GM in, uh in Gamers Guild who was like, okay, if you're going to have soda at my table or drinks at my table, make sure it's got a screw cap. I don't want, like, nine fucking open cans of soda around my, you know, 50 60 $80 minis that I painted by hand and now they've got fucking Mountain Dew on them. Whatever you bring, man, make sure it's got a screw-on cap and you screw that cap back on or you set it by your ankles or whatever. And different GMs have different styles. Personally, I just don't like it at my table at all. You know, I say, hey, no food. You know, we're, we're going to have drinks or bottled water or whatever. You know, make sure it's got a screw on cap, set it by your ankles, whatever. You know, there's a couple of hundred dollars of D&D &D books on the table. There's, you know, a nice marker board on the table. There's papers, different kinds of stuff all over the place. And if there's, you know, again six players and a GM, that's seven open drinks on one table with all this D&D &D stuff. I just don't, I don't dig it. It's not my bag. Probably try and just check with your GM, see, hey, you know, are snacks okay? What kind of snacks should I not bring? Um, just common courtesy kind of stuff. And not necessarily just gross stuff that's going to get everywhere, like Cheetos, but just like in general. You know, I've had, I, I don't remember who it was, he would always come to D&D &D games with, like, a full fucking packed lunch of stuff. He'd have, like, pizza slices, and he'd come in with, like, a giant bag of Taco Bell and sit there and crunch on it for, like, an hour and a half while we're trying. We gotta smell that and not have any ourselves, and it's, it's disrespectful, it's distasteful, it's not, it's not cool, you know? Set aside time if you can, for your, uh, for your, uh, for food and snacks. Personally, I don't think they belong at the D&D &D table. And hey, you guys might be just the opposite. You might have, like, a bowl of popcorn or a big thing of pretzels and a bunch of drinks, and it doesn't matter to you. But again, that's just my personal thing, is drinks with screw tops and, and no food, because we're going to stop for half an hour anyway. But it's different from table to table. Um, and then I guess the last bit for, uh, table, as far as, like, table manners, table etiquette, other than, you know, food or being ready to play when you sit down or having all your stuff ready when you come in the door, is to respect the home of your host. If you're not at, you know, if you're not at a conference room in a library somewhere, or even if you are, actually, it doesn't matter. Respect, you know, whoever's room it is, whoever's house it is. You know, bring a thing of paper towels. Bring a little spray bottle of Lysol, whatever it happens to be. Make it like a campground, you know. Leave it better than you saw it when you first got there. There should be no evidence that you were ever there 
uh, before you walk out the door. Don't leave a big mess. You know, if, if you guys had like 18 sodas and four pizza boxes and, and all this crap and the game ends and it's 1030 at night, you know, look over at your GM and be like, hey, man, we made a big, we, made, we got all this, this garbage and stuff. Give me the bag. I'll walk it to the corner for you or whatever, wherever they keep their garbage bag. That extra little bit of etiquette so that they don't have to go to bed at, you know, 10, 30, 11, 12, however late your game goes, and then get up in the morning and they have to clean up all that crap from their D&D game last night. Uh, do the cleanup you know, throw it all in a big garbage bag or two garbage bags or whatever happens to be and take it with you if you're leaving, you know? Show respect for your host and, and the, the room or the space or the table that you've been given uh, afterwards, you know? And, and messes get made, spills happen, but uh, be a part of the cleanup crew you know, keep you know, keep the realm tidy, or whatever. What did it say at the at the Renaissance Fair? I think there was a, by like the no littering signs. It said keep the realm tidy. You know, no littering or stuff, something like that. Um, show respect for whatever room, whatever location you're in. Uh, when I was at Gamers Guild, actually, we had uh, we would always have a, a roll of paper towels and like a a table spray. Part of that was just for dust and for grime and stuff, but now and then we'd have like a like caramel popcorn that got spilled or somebody would spill their drink on something and what are you going to do? You can't let it turn into hardened syrup on this nice wood table, no. Especially nowadays if you get like a nice table that's real wood and not just compressed cardboard that's meant to look like wood, those could, that could be a thousand dollar piece of furniture. You don't want that. So, you know, as soon as something happens, you'd be like, oh, I've got paper towels. <laughs> and wipe it down and keep playing. Or wipe it down, you know, once all the maps and all the paperwork is gone, say, you know, okay, here, you do, you know, you do the cleanup this time. I'm going to gather up the garbage, you know, stuff like that. Leave it better than you found it. You know, it's, it's only good etiquette if you're staying in someone else's house or if you're staying at a library or a or a uh, hobby shop, or whatever it happens to be. So, those are kind of my thoughts on table manners, table etiquette. Uh, that doesn't necessarily have a lot to do with the game itself, but you know, you know, hygiene. Nobody wants to smell you. Do all your shopping. Come prepared. Be ready to sit down and play. Go potty beforehand. It sounds like little piddly things, but. If everybody did this all the time, I wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. So, weigh your options. It'll make you look better in front of your GM. Uh, minimize food at the table, just in general. I mean, nobody wants to sit there and watch you eat, you know, five, you know, five soft tacos and a burrito and then a shredded chicken enchilada. Uh, over the first hour and a half of the game, because I've had people do it. It's fucking disgusting. And then, of course, clean up. Respect. Respect the home. Respect the room. Respect the table itself. Whatever it happens to be. Uh, good table manners make for stronger groups, because you will look out for each other. You will... Um, Hold each other accountable. That's that's probably a better way to put it. Hold each other accountable for the room, for the table space. Don't leave it with any any crumbs, any anything. And make sure you like I said, all these seem like common sense, but common sense ain't so common or else I wouldn't be talking about it. So keep all that in mind. And I'll see you guys next time. So thank you, Jasmine Schaefer, for the, for the good topic idea. And I'll see you guys next time on Let's Talk Tabletop. So if you want to hear me talk about a certain topic, or if you have a question about tabletop games or D&D 3.5 or whatever in general, put it in the comments below. Or better yet, for this topic, let's, you know, it's Let's Talk Tabletop. Put it in the comments below. What sorts of, uh, of etiquette or manners do you expect at your table? Or what have you always tried to make sure your players or your DM 
what's what are the table manners expected at your table? I want to hear and see if you if you guys have anything uh, anything unique, anything I may not have talked about. So put that put all that in the comments below. We'll keep talking about it, and I'll see you guys next time. Keep gaming.